Hello and welcome to this ICAEW Excel community video in which you're going to be examining how to perform sampling using the new Microsoft 365 dynamic arrays. My name is David Lyford smith and I'm a technical manager at ICAW. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of how the new dynamic arrays feature can be used to do some really powerful calculations and automation of common tasks. And the particular task we're going to be examining here is audit sampling. And I'm going to show you how to do both item-based sampling and monetary unit sampling using these new dynamic arrays. So what we've got here, first of all, is some sample data. There are some formulas in the left here, which we'll look at in a second, but we just for the moment have a very simple uh, sample where we have 100 items, with each with an item identifier, which for the ease of the example is just a text label from 001 to 100, and then the value of the item in question. So this might be debtors, it might be stock, it can really be anything. So we have both an item and a monetary amount. We have assigned each of those items a number, which is mostly just for ease of labeling. And we also have a cumulative value column. And in this column, we are keeping track of the total amount that has been uh, seen in the table thus far. This is done using a sum function. So if we have a look at this, we are adding a value. And this uses a particular property of the index function, which means you can use it as, the, uh, way, as a way of labeling a range. So we're going from the first value in the value column. So that's index value comma one. And then the range ends at at value, which is the value on this particular row. And then we're finally subtracting the value on this particular row because we want to uh, have our cumulative value starting at zero for reasons which will become clear later on. The first thing that we're going to look at is how we can use our dynamic arrays to do unit sampling or item sampling, where we're literally just picking items from this list at random, completely ignoring the value. First of all, we'll note that we've got a calculation up at the top here that's told us the total number of items in the population. That's just a rows function there. It's telling us we have 100 rows. We have a total value. That's just a sum. And uh, we actually have some other stats based on the pre-existing template values, but I'm going to show you how to recreate these formulas. We also have as our second input the size of the sample that we want. So let's move the pre-existing data off the screen for now and have a look at how we can get things started. First things first, we're going to want to list out how many items we're sampling, and we just want to have a label for each. So we're going to call that sample item number. Make sure that we've got enough room for our columns there. If we do this, we can use the dynamic array function sequence. Sequence just returns a sequence of a set of numbers. In our case, we know that we want to base that off of the size of the sample. So equal sequence B3 is all we need. And that dynamic formula will then spill down the rows. And then you'll see that we end up with a list of the numbers from 1 to 15. The items lower down in the array show a gray formula that you can't edit, showing that this is not actually a formula cell. It's just a cell that is being spilled into from our control cell in G3 here. Next, we are going to look at how we can do our item sampling. We know that we are going to need to pick 15 of these items in a random order. So let's look at, first of all, how we can just get all of the items. We can do that by typing equals and then selecting the item identifier column. You'll notice that here we can actually take advantage of the structured reference language that comes with the fact that this is declared as an Excel table. So we get equals sampling square bracket item identifier square bracket. Press return and that will spill the entire column into a 100 column array, a 100 row array. Just in case we're not happy with our table, of course, you can click on that and see in table design where it's given the name sampling. So we have the items now in the same order as in the table. How can we then put that into a random order? Well, what we're going to do is make use of the dynamic arrays sort by feature, which lets us sort one array according to another. 
So we're going to sort this according to another array, and the array we're going to sort it by is actually a random array that we can create using the dynamic arrays function rand array. We do need to specify how many rows we want that random array to be. Of course, it needs to be the same number as the actual table, which we've got in a helpful cell here. So I'll just click on that. And we're going, the sort order is not relevant in this case because we're creating a random array. It doesn't matter whether we sort it ascending or descending. End result will be shuffling the items into a random order. So the rand array, just to show you what that would do on its own, rand array of 100 generates 100 random numbers. By default, those numbers are between 0 and 1. We are then sorting that random array into order and using that order to sort our item identifier column. And that has the result of shuffling the item identifier into a random list. Next, we need to just pick the chosen 15 items. Now, we only want, therefore, the items which correspond with a number in this region. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to wrap our entire function thus far in an index function. We're going to take an index of that list, and we're only going to pull out... Well, let's first start by just pulling out the G3 values, the first item. So that will just pull out the first item in the range. Now, we don't want to copy and paste our formula down here. While we could do that, that would leave us with a formula that was always going to be 15 formulas, even if our size of our sample changes later on. But this is where we can actually rely on another handy feature of dynamic arrays, which is that instead of referring to G3, we can refer to G3 hash, which means G3 and the entire range that spills from it. By doing that, we now shuffle our array into a random order and return the first 15 items. And now if we change our sample size to say seven, then our sequence function will recalculate. And so our hash-based reference will also recalculate and our dynamic arrays will shrink as such to pick a new random seven items. Let's restore that to 15 for the time being. Now we want to have the actual values of these items as well as their item numbers. So we can just do this using the index match function. We're going to take the sampling values and we're going to index that according to match. We're going to match the item sampling numbers with a hash. We're going to take that whole array and match each item in turn. We're going to match those items against the item identifier column an exact match and that index match will now return all of our item values. Let's make sure that we are using a nice currency uh, format for that column and there is our items, there's our random selection of items and there's our numbers. You can see for example there's three for 6,052. So that's all done. However, a lot of the times in audit sampling, we don't want to use item sampling, but instead we want to use monetary unit sampling. Sampling. So in monetary unit sampling, we are looking at wanting to pick a random pound. So we've got a 535,000 pounds of items here. And instead of giving each item equal weight, we want to uh, choose a random pound from with those 535,000 pounds and sample the item that contains it. So that creates a weighting where larger items are more likely to get picked. With item sampling, this £116 transaction is as likely to get picked as this £10,000 one, and that's uh, going to lead to us oversampling these smaller and less significant items. So let's look at how we can do monetary unit sampling. This is where our cumulative value is going to come in. And this is where we're going to start using some more complex dynamic arrays. First thing is first is that we need to set up a, a limit so that we know how our, we are going to actually work. What we're going to do here is create a sequence. And the number of rows in that sequence is going to be equal to the number of pounds in our sample. So we're just going to put uh, click that there. I'm actually just going to click on it directly just to show you how that worked. This is, of course, not a decimal number. But if you look down, you'll see that what happens is that it goes as far as 535329, 
So it rounds it down automatically because the number of rows has to be an integer. It automatically rounds it down. So we can just do that. So that is our list of items, our list of pounds. What we're then going to do is randomize that list. Once again, we can do the same trick where we can use a sort by. We're going to sort that by a random array, which has the same number of rows. So let's do that. It's going to take a little while because we're randomizing 535,000 items. So now we have taken those 535,000 unique distinct pounds and put them into a random order. The next thing that we need to do is convert these values into finding where in the sample they actually fall. So to do that, we are going to go back to our original function here, and we're going to do an index match. And what we're going to do is we're going to index the item identifier column by typing equals index sampling left square bracket item identifier. And what we want to index that by is a match of these values, this randomly shuffled pound values. And we're going to look for those values in the cumulative value column. But the match type that we're going to use is a less than match, or a one. This will find the closest matching value that is not greater than the searching item and return that. And we're going to use that to then get a list of the item identifiers at the end. Oh, we need one more close bracket. So it's going to take that list of randomly sorted pound amounts and correspond each of them with a particular item from the table. So all the pounds, all those numbers from uh, 1 to 7847 will be assigned to item identifier number 1 and so forth. Now, our next problem is that this is going, list is definitely going to contain duplicates because, of course, we've sampled every item in the list. And in fact, if I just quickly show you with highlight cell formulas, duplicate values, uh, we will most certainly it'll take a little while for Excel to compute that because there's so many items in the list. But of course, they're all duplicates. They all appear multiple times. So let's cancel that out. We don't want that to happen. We only want each item to be eligible for the sample once. And the way that we're going to accomplish that is by taking our function and passing it into a unique function. This means that each item will only show up once, but the order is, restored, is kept from the shuffling. So whichever item showed up first will show up first and will go down in value from there. So let's put our unique function in. So that means we now have all 100 items and we can check, yes, our list is 100 items long, but they are sorted according to when they first appear in our random monetary unit sample. And actually, we can do some sort of general sense checking on this example. The last one to appear at the minute is 84 and 74, in which you'll see 84 is a small item, 74 is quite a small item. So as we would expect, the ones that are kind of showing up later are generally smaller items, whereas the first one showing up includes like 11, 7 and 10, which are bigger. It's not always the biggest items, but they are going to be more likely to be the larger items in our range. The final thing we need to do with this is once again restrict that to only the first n items to match our chosen sample size. So we're going to wrap that all in an index function. It's going to look once again at our monetary unit sampling, our sample item numbers here. And that will mean that we'll restrict only picking first 15 items for our sample in this case. Finally, we want to pull the values across. And of course, we can actually just reuse our function here, the same as before. We want to move that across a little. We're going to be matching uh, all those items in our item identifier. We're going to be looking at all of our sampling values, and we're going to match the monetary units in the item identifiers, just like we did with the other one. Once again, let's make sure that we've got a nice currency format for that column. And now you can see the results of our two different types 
or sample. You'll notice, of course, there are multiple small items likely to appear in the purely item-based version, whereas the monetary unit sampling prefers larger items. These functions all involve randomization, randomizing. So if we recalculate the sheet at any point, what we'll find is that the sampling will change. That's because these are all, uh, all of these rand arrays, these are being recalculated every time there is any kind of a change or recalculation. But of course, if we wanted to finalize picking our sample, we could just copy these and paste them somewhere else. Finally, if uh, we decide to change our sample size, let's say we need to make it 10 instead of 15, because we have used dynamic arrays throughout, all five of these uh, functions are going to be dynamically resized when we change the sample size. Likewise, if I expand it and change it to, let's say, 20 items, again, all of these functions will be randomly re-randomized and the sample size will be increased. So we can see how those work. Moving back to our dynamic array sampling template, you will see that in this version, we just have the one formula. And the way that this works is that the one formula is based on an if function. And that if function identifies the sampling type that we've chosen in the drop down menu here at the top. We then choose to use either the value if true, if the item sampling is chosen, uses the much simpler formula. And otherwise we use this much more complicated monetary unit sampling formula as we built earlier. We of course only need a single value formula as well, just a simple index match to look up the appropriate value based on the item identifier. And that's all we need. But just as before, we are able to use the dynamic arrays to change the size of the sample and have them spill into the appropriate number of cells in a very easy way. So that's a look at how we can use dynamic arrays to do both unitary and monetary unit sampling and how we can avoid making things complicated for the end user by building some very versatile and flexible formulas. If you'd like to learn more about dynamic arrays or if you'd like to just have a go at playing around with this template yourself, the template is downloadable from a link in the description. And you can also find out more about dynamic arrays and all of ICAW's Excel help and guidance via the Excel community. ICAW's Excel community can be accessed at icw.com slash join Excel. We've got a variety of free content as well as premium webinars, blogs, training modules, and more, which you can join for a low cost. If you'd like to find out more, as I say, icw.com slash join Excel, or follow the link in the description. Thank you very much.